Hello guys and welcome to the latest different view. Today we will be doing something related to the latest patch notes. The latest patch notes contain a brand new item, or should I say a remade item. Stark's fervor has been changed to Zeke's Herald. Now we're going to be taking a look at that and seeing how effective the build path for that is and stick around with me and I'll take a look. So getting right into it. Let's first take a look at the difference between the two items. We'll use this picture I photoshopped. I really appreciate the LOL wiki for being able to help me out with all these pictures. Most of my information comes from there. It's a very great, it's a great website, so take a look when you have the time. So the biggest differences you can see here are that the attack speed is now replaced by 250 health. And that 8% lifesteal has been nerfed from the aura. The 30 health regeneration is completely gone. The 20 armor reduction aura is now replaced by 15% cooldown reduction. And now that the final cost is 2145 as opposed to 2550. Now that's a 405 gold, gold reduction in the total price. Now what we have to find out is whether these differences are worth only 405 gold less. Getting back into it. Now let's do some gold efficiency analysis. You do remember my stat table. As I said before, this is based on gold efficiency and not how useful an item is. Now, let's take a look at the stat table for that. Now, firstly, you'll see that Stark's Fervor for 5 allies is ridiculously cost efficient. However, it must be noted that 150 health regen across 5 people provides a huge boost to this. Now, keeping in mind that team fights do not occur until mid game to late game, and at that stage in a team fight, 30 health regen. regen doesn't make or break a fight. It might save someone by 1 or 2 HP, but it can be ignored as health regen is mainly an important stat during laning. So assuming that the aura effect is taken into uh, count after laning, then we can omit health regen from this calculation. So let's take this to another step where we take out health regeneration. So now you notice at this spot right here, there is no health regen. So now with that, we can see that Stark's Fervor is still more cost efficient compared to Zeke's Herald, even with one person affected or five people affected. An important note is that five allies here means that five enemies are present as well. I didn't want to make this column too long by writing five allies and enemies. It just means that everyone is affected within the aura, and this is the maximum effect of the aura possible. So we can see that across the enemy team, 100 armor is reduced, which makes for more damage for your AD carry, for example. So keeping that in mind, the value of a cost for both of these items are quite similar. 1.27 versus 0 0.99, 3.23 versus 2.62. Those aren't major differences, considering that each stat benefits different types of characters better. So Zeke's Herald adds in health and cooldown reduction, which means... The aim of this is to make for more build paths for supports and tanks. Let's see if Riot's really achieved that. So, I mean, gold efficiency wise, they are gold efficient. Is it as gold efficient as Stark's Fervor? No, Zeke's Herald is less gold efficient, but you do still get more than what you put in. So, it is worth it in a sense. Now, let's take a look at build pathing. Now, here's a list of common items that supports and tanks take. Now as you can see, all these items have a usual, useful effect. So Shirelius Riri has that 40% movement speed bonus, which is great for initiating or escaping and repositioning. And we've also got Randuin's, which is great for slowing the enemy team and you know slowing down that enemy carry for easy bursting down. We've got Locket of the Iron Solari, which is a new item, which shields the entire team. We'll do that in a future analysis perhaps. Ages of the Legion makes your entire team tankier. Wall of the Ancients provides your whole team with regeneration fix based on spell vamp and ability power damage. Frozen Heart slows down the enemy's attack speed. Bantry's Veil protects you from a spell which can be game breaking. Or Spirit Visage which increases your own healing effects. Now this isn't an exhaustive list, it's just an example of a list of items and I do believe that all of these items above are better than Zeke's Herald. Now let me explain why. Let me explain. Let me take for example Shirelius Reverie here. Let's take a look at these stats. 
you get 330 health, which is more than what you get with Zeke's Herald. You get health regeneration and mana regeneration, which you don't get with Zeke's Herald. You get 15% CDR, which you do get with Zeke's Herald. And you get this active, which is quite possibly the best active in the game. It's amazing for initiation, escape, repositioning. It's simply one of the best, in my opinion. Obviously, this is my opinion. It's up to you to decide on what's best. Now, Shirelia's Reverie... Re Let me say that again. Shirelia's Reverie has an amazing build path. It has a Kindle Gem, which is common with Zeke's Herald. But it has a Philosopher's Stone instead of Zeke, um, Zeke Herald's build path. Now, Philosopher's Stone not only regens gold, it also regens health, it regens mana, and that's something most tanks and supports benefit heavily from. So, you get sustenance in lane, and you're also earning gold, which in the current meta, tanks and supports do not get as much farm as the carries. So, not only does it subsidize the cost of the final uh, item, it also helps in saving you money for health potions, for example, and wards, things like that. So what do you stand to gain by buying Zeke's Herald and Shirley's Reverie? Well, okay, look. If you buy Zeke's Herald, you end up paying more gold to give out an aura of 20% attack speed and 12% lifesteal at the cost of probably the best active in the game, at the cost of gold regeneration, health, and mana regeneration. Now, let's take a different view on this. Excuse the pun. Who really benefits from this aura of the attack speed and lifesteal? So, to benefit from just over a dagger's worth of attack speed and about a vampire acceptor's worth of lifesteal. At most, you can have an 80 top, an 80 jungler, and an 80 bot in the current meta who would benefit from this. But in my opinion, would I rather have my support packing a 40% movement speed boost on demand or giving me an extra vampire acceptor's worth of lifesteal? I would 100 times out of 100 times. I would always choose Shirelius because that saves the team and that also wins games. It's up to you to decide if you would as well. I can't tell you it is better definitively. I can give you my opinion and say that I think it's better, but it's up to you to make the final decision. So as always guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and the post. Um, I am thinking of making more versus items analysis after this, namely thinking of Death Cap as the Rabidons and an analysis of Locket of Dying's Iron of Sorari. Um, give me your feedback on whether you think I should do them. I'll probably get around to doing the Abyss vs. Death Cap sometime in the next two weeks. I hope you guys enjoyed watching. Um, if you liked it, then go ahead and like the video, thumbs up, favorite, subscribe, anything like that. Um, it helps me out more than you can think about it, than you can, than you can imagine. Um, I'm not forcing you to, up to you of course. And I hope you keep up with my next posts. Thanks for watching and reading. Bye bye. This is Stifty and they're signing out.